Good morning. In today's video, I'll be taking you to the Kennedy Space Center Day of Remembrance, a ceremony held at the Memorial Mirror. This mirror was built in 2017 and is located just north of Kennedy Space Center Visitor Complex entrance overlooking the launch pads so that their spirits can watch our space program evolve thanks to them. The ceremony lasted approximately 48 minutes, but I highlighted the key moments so that you can also reflect on the lives of these brave souls of STS-107 and Columbia. Today marks the 20th anniversary of the loss of the Space Shuttle Columbia and its seven astronauts. On February 1st, 2003, the shuttle disintegrated during re-entry, killing all on board. Today we come together to remember and honor the seven astronauts who lost their lives on this faithful day. I'd like to uh, welcome you to the NASA Day of Remembrance. Um, it's a big day for, for NASA all over the country at each NASA center. Uh, we take time to pause and reflect, to remember those who have paid the ultimate sacrifice, but also to inspire us to future uh, human space exploration, to remember those great uh, individuals that make all this prop possible, engineers, astronauts, administrators, we, um, we take this opportunity to reflect on our successes and to be inspired for our future missions. I'd like to ask everyone to please stand for the presentation of colors by the Vieira High School Junior ROTC. Thank you. I'd like to ask uh, those who are able, uh, you, you don't have to, but if those who are able to remain standing, I'd like to uh, recognize uh, Rabbi Zvi Konikov for the invocation. We pause and gather here today. In this Hebrew year of gathering, otherwise known as Hakel, to honor all of our nation's fallen astronauts, including the Columbia crew and my friend, Israeli astronaut Ilan Ramon. Twenty years ago, Ilan turned to me with a question. How does one mark the Sabbath in space with every 90 minutes another sunset, every 10 and a half hours a Sabbath, and every 20 days is the new year, the Jewish new year, Rosh Hashanah. Jerusalem, we have a problem. <laughs> so I had my homework to do. But Ilan taught us a powerful message. No matter how fast we're going, no matter how important our work, we must pause and think about why we're here on earth. And that's what we're doing today. We pause to recall the memory of all those courageous souls, all our nation's fallen astronauts who gave their whole soul and body too, including Colombia's seven heroic human beings. We pause because the astronauts have done theirs, but their legacy lives on. They wished to serve, and they did. Now, now it is our turn to serve. We pause and think about why we're here on earth. But why are we here on earth? Well, Ilan Ramon was not only good at asking questions. I think he gave us the answer to. Part of the reason Ilan wanted to know exactly when the Sabbath begins on the space shuttle was so he can know precisely when to recite his Sabbath Kiddush or benediction over his creatively prepared grape juice container and straw. Miraculously defying rational explanation, fragile pages of Ramon's personal onboard diary survived. Despite the extreme heat of the explosion, 
the extreme atmospheric cold at 37 miles above the earth and weeks of rain, mud, and insects on the ground, Ilan's words remained readable. God saw all that he had made, and behold, it was very good. Heaven, earth, and all their components were thus completed. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy, he wrote. A handwritten copy of the Friday night Kiddush prayer was Ilan's final message to the world. Ilan went to the heavens and declared that we must always remember the message of the Sabbath. That life on earth is a very good thing. Tov ma'od. And this is the reason why we are here on earth. Despite the obstacles or concealments that temporarily obscure the good from the naked eye. Ilan, a second generation Holocaust survivor, taught us to turn pain into action and tragedy into growth. Every challenge, every obstacle, every setback, no matter how painful or difficult, must be challenged, must, must be cha channeled into greater and positive activity, making the world a more godly and kinder place. For while Colombia is gone, our holy mission continues. Colombia is gone, yet NASA, committed to continue the legacy of all its fallen astronauts, has redoubled over the last two decades its space exploration with all the benefits for mankind. And the sky, neither the moon, is the limit. While the world will pause this week to honor the memory of Ilan Ramon and the Columbia crew and all the fallen astronauts, millions of the Rebbe's followers and admirers from all walks of life will ponder the words he declared in his inauguration speech, that the world is a garden and intrinsically good for mankind to reveal. Let us pause to remember the legacy of Ilan Ramon and remember why we're here on earth, to reveal the goodness and purpose of creation and to carry the baton of our nation's great heroes into the future. Let us gather today in unity. Let us do one extra act of kindness in memory of all our nation's shining lights. Almighty God, may this gathering serve as a powerful expression of our unity and resolve, and may it usher in the long-awaited era of redemption, an era of godliness and goodness, an era of peace. Amen. I'd like to acknowledge some of our honored guests that are here with us today. First, Janet Petro, the Kennedy Space Center director, our director here at KSC. Thank you, Janet, for being here. And our former director, now associate administrator of NASA, Bob Cabana. Thank you for coming down from Washington to be with us. I'd like to acknowledge our Astronaut Memorial Foundation Board of Directors, the Astronaut Memorial Foundation Chairman and daughter of Lieutenant Colonel Roger Chaffee, Ms. Cheryl Chaffee, AMF Board Member Joe Mayer, AMF Board Member Jack Kirschenbaum, AMF Board of Directors Treasurer Mike Olson. At this time, I'd like to introduce uh, our, our uh, Center Director here at Kennedy Space Center. We're so, we've been so blessed to have the best of the best run the show up here, and Janet's no exception to that. I'd like to ask her to say a few words. Thank you, Thad. Um, and thank you, Rabbi, for your message um, today and for your reflections on Ilana. It was really, really um, special. And thank you to all of you who are joining us here today. This day, our day of remembrance, is a solemn and sacred time in our agency. 
and in a community that frequently commemorates the milestones and achievements made possible through the teamwork and contributions of so many, today is a different kind of observance, a day to recognize and to honor those who have lost their lives in the pursuit of knowledge. It's a day to step back, to pause, reflect on our pursuits, and also on our history. We gather in remembrance of the heroes who made the ultimate sacrifice in their quest to discover and explore, not for personal gain, but on behalf of humanity. Those losses are heavy, they're sobering, and despite the decades that separate us from those fateful moments of loss, they are ever present in our hearts and in our minds as we continue onward on the path that they blazed. This year marks the 20th anniversary of the loss of Crew of Columbia during the reentry of STS-107. For some, that has been, seems like a lifetime, and for others, it seems like it was just yesterday. But for our agency, it is a time that lives here in the present, shaping our culture, informing our decisions, and helping us to forge the way ahead. And as more and more people who were present in our workforce on that day of tragedy 20 years ago, retire, it is imperative that our culture, our decision-making processes remain focused on the lessons that we learn from Columbia, Challenger, and Apollo 1. And even as we look to the future, we do so with one eye on the past, reminding ourselves of those lessons and the price that was paid. So from the crews of Apollo 1 to those of Challenger and Columbia, we remember, we are forever touched. We are forever changed. We are forever humbled. And we are forever committed to ensuring the safety of those who carry on their legacies in the name of exploration and recovery. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Director Petro. At this time, I'd like to uh, welcome Bob Cabana. He's made the, uh, the long trip from Washington, D.C. to be with us. He would like to say a few words. Thank you, Thad. Why do we do this every year? Why do we have a, a NASA Day of Remembrance? Yeah, obviously, it's, it's to honor our fallen comrades on the mirror, those that paid the ultimate sacrifice in our quest to explore. But more importantly, it's so we do not forget the hard lessons learned from Apollo, Challenger, and Columbia. I'm willing to bet that half of the NASA workforce wasn't even here when we launched the last shuttle mission. That turnover that we had, it is so important that they learn these lessons so that they are not repeated again. 20 years ago, on February 1st, about 8 o'clock on a Saturday morning, I was out at Midfield on the shuttle landing facility with the landing and recovery convoy, waiting for those twin sonic booms that would usher Columbia back to her home here in Florida. They never came. That, that was extremely hard to round everybody up, to get them to the right places, having to tell families, significant others, children, that their loved ones, that there was no hope, they weren't coming home. The process that we went through, what we had to learn through all of that, it was so important, but it was avoidable. When we look back, why do we have to keep repeating the same hard lessons that this normalization of deviance that you can have something wrong but as long as nothing bad happens it's okay it's not it's very important and I ask all the the NASA team the Kennedy team that's listening today that when they go back to work they ensure that they have created an environment where everybody is heard where they can ask questions without fear of retribution that they get answers to their questions, that they feel free to speak up, that when something isn't right, we take action and we actually listen to what people are saying 
and do the right thing. I don't ever want to have to go through another Columbia. That was an amazing crew. Rick Husband was one of the, the finest Christian men that I've ever known. Prior to walking out of the suit room, he gathered the whole crew together, Christian, Hindu, Jew, and they, they circled arms and they prayed before they get into the uh, fan to go out to the launch pad. Willie McCool, he was number two in his class at the Naval Academy. Technically sharp, probably one of the nicest guys I've ever known. Mike Anderson, Air Force test pilot, two of the cutest daughters you've ever seen, now fine young women. What a really nice guy he was. He loved his Audi TT that he drove, and just a really fine gentleman. Dave Brown, flight surgeon, naval aviator, astronaut. What a great guy he was. He was my go-to guy for anything that had anything to do with uh, audio equipment, TVs, whatever. He knew it all. He was on top of it. Oh, Laurel Clark, NASA, NASA flight surgeon, astronaut. Um, Laurel had the ability to know w when you were a little down, when things weren't right, and she could always make you smile. And she wore the wildest socks all the time. She was just awesome. Kalpna. Uh, Kalpna was so much fun. What a what an amazing, smart woman, but what a really nice person too. Um, oh gosh, you know, it, I, I think back on those folks, and it's just absolutely. I feel blessed to have known them, to have been able to to work with them. Uh, Ilan, the rabbi said all the great things about Ilan, and, and he was all that and more. What I remember most from Ilan was his infectious smile. Uh, as sharp as he was, as good a man as he was, he, uh, he could just absolutely bring a smile to your face and was a, a pleasure to talk to and to work with. Uh, it, it truly was a, an amazing crew, and it's so great to see their names up there. You know, I, uh, I'm never going to forget them, all right? And I don't want anybody to forget. I want it to be personable. I want everybody to feel what I felt knowing that crew so that we remember and we don't forget that we don't make the mistakes of the past as we move forward exploring beyond our home planet, exploring the cosmos, establish a presence in our solar system beyond planet Earth as we go back to the moon and on to Mars. Thank you. Joey Beasley and Cal Breeze, they performed it here ten years ago during the ten year anniversary called 16 minutes. Um, it was 16 minutes when Columbia started breaking up even though they were over West Texas only 16 minutes away from landing. The words are quite poignant. I think it really emphasized how remarkable space exploration is. It reinvents your whole view of time and space. Thank you for being here. How can we find what's been lost? Retrace steps, find out the
Now we would like to take this time and opportunity to place a wreath at the memorial to honor those who have sacrificed, sacrificed their lives in the pursuit of space exploration. I'd like to welcome Janet Petro, Bob Cabana, and Cheryl Chaffee to place the wreath, and then we will follow with a moment of silence. Please join us in the closing prayer from Pastor Ryan Alonzo from Lineage Church. Good morning. It's an honor to be with you today, and I invite you to pray with me. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. With every sunrise, we're reminded of your mercy. And as many have said so well this morning, we pause and we reflect on the amazing astronauts who have lived a life of discipline and excellence that led to great sacrifice on behalf of all of us. We know that they have led the way in many aspects of life. That is our memory of them, and we, we reflect on that today. They have entered eternity ahead of us. And as we consider that, we, we pray, Lord, that they're example will be used as inspiration for generations to come that they may not be forgotten and we thank you for their lives we also thank you for the loved ones gathered today we thank you for those in this crowd who represent the workforce that continues to explore space and all that is beyond and we thank you for those who are gathered who are here to pay their respects and we pray you the God of hope would give us an inner strength to continue the good work that you have planned for us we thank you for the peace that you give to us that passes even our own understanding we ask for comfort today for those who need it Lord we honor you and we praise you for life and purpose. It is in your name, Lord, that we pray these things. Amen. Thank you. This concludes the Day of Remembrance. And again, I want to thank you for joining us for this very special day. You're welcome to approach the memorial um, and place your flower, weave it into the fence here in front of the memorial as a token of our appreciation for the sacrifice. May we never forget the courage and dedication to the mission and their ultimate sacrifice to future humanity's understanding of the universe. As we reflect on their legacy, let us also remember the importance of safety protocols and the need for increased resources and funding to improve the safety and reliability 
of our space missions. NASA holds a day of remembrance to honor and remember those heroes that lost their lives for the cause of exploration. It's also a day to reflect on their dedication and hard work of engineers who work together to make space exploration possible. For the Columbia disaster, we learned the importance for proper communication and collaboration between engineers, technicians, and mission control. One united system. We also learned the importance of analyzing data and taking into account all possible risks. When designing and launching a mission, the loss of life reminds us of the risks associated with space exploration and the need to create and use safety protocols. To protect everyone involved in this endeavor, now and beyond into the future, spreading awareness of the Space Shuttle Columbia's tragedy, talking about the astronauts' heroism, and educating others involved in our space program, now allows Apollo 1, Challenger, and Columbia to stay in our hearts and minds for the future. These two videos are also important to watch this week. It should be the focus of future engineers, technicians, and astronauts of this great country of ours. So make sure you give them some thought and check them out and reflect on them as well. Thank you for watching this video. Take care and God bless.